Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and some of our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent, Ozzy V. As always with me on this program, first in the Northern Bay, California area, Northern California Bay. See, this movie messed me up. The Northern California Bay area, world famous juggler, Greg Larson, how you doing? Ozzy, um, happy to be here. Uh, it's uh, I'm glad you're happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Ozzy? You sound you sound pleasant. Oh, today. I'll get to that in a second. I'll get to that in a second. Also with us, yeah. producer Todd. How you so, doing? I'm doing great. I bet you are. I bet you are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us wherever you are joining us via YouTube, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. Before we jump into the jovial journey of jolly joking and jaw jacking, we're going to air this trailer for this film that we reviewed, Private School, released in 1983, rated R, starring Phoebe Cates. Todd, if you would please be kind, I guess, to air the trailer. We got it. Thank you. What they're teaching in private school isn't private anymore. Uh huh. Especially at the Cherryvale Academy for Girls. Uh huh. Are you feeling romantic now, my darling? Where there's no limit. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi, sugar. On what you can learn. Where a guy like Bubba Beauregard at a girls' school like this has the odds stacked against him. Nine to one against him even copping a look. Fifteen to one against him ever getting a date. Whoa. 22 to 1 against you scoring in any way, shape, or form. Yeah! It takes Bubba Beauregard, the animal of the 80s. You sleazebag! To make a private school go public. Private school. Yep, that was private school. <laughs> Released 1983. Synopsis from IMDb reads. Chris, from a girls' boarding school, loves Jim from a nearby boys' boarding school. Jordan also wants Jim and plays dirty. Jim and two friends visit the girls' school posing as girls, which that final line lasted all of 10 minutes. And uh, directed by Noel Black, written by Dan Greenberg and Suzanne O'Malley, starring Phoebe Cates, Betsy Russell, and Matthew Modine, as the characters Christine, Jordan, and Jim respectively also mentioning michael zorik as bubba who is a um i want to say a poor man's flounder but more like if you were to take flounder and bluto combine the two call that up in the poor man category and then double up on the poor man category like i think it's no secret that this film made me angry but those Wait, are my flounder thoughts. which flounder from I'm sorry, not Little Mermaid, Flounder from Animal House. That's why I meant <laughs> okay. Bluto. Flounder and Bluto. If you were to combine Flounder and Bluto and called that the poor man's level of that and doubled down another level, poor man, so poor man, poor man's version of those characters combined is, I think, an accurate description, at least okay. how I felt. Because I was thinking Little Mermaid and Popeye, and it was really throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I kind of want to see that now, though, too. <laughs> I bet you do, Todd. I bet you do. I like fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. I like fun when it makes sense, but I'm sorry. I <sighs> My initial thoughts there, I'll, I can delve deeper momentarily, but just initial thoughts, sir. It felt like a 35-minute story that just was stretched out to an hour and it's a 93 minute run time. So an hour and 33 minutes. And as I predicted, this would be a film that you would find on 2 AM airing on Cinemax. So Greg, how about your initial thoughts? Well, honestly, this is one of the breast films we've uh, oh, reviewed. Oh, there so. it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, rough, uh, not knowing what this was about, and uh, I told you know, him beforehand, as, I should have warned him about some content. Yeah, as uh, I've mentioned before, there are times that I watch some of these films on slow days at work. <laughs> oh man, I thought you were going to say watch them with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> 
See, no, that, that would have been that would have been fine. Too. Oh, okay. That, All right. That would have okay. been fine. She would have okay. yeah, that that would have been perfectly okay, but um All right. Yeah. Uh yeah, so it made it interesting, um, but it it was all right. <laughs> Before I get to Todd's uh, initial thoughts, I just want to, Greg, you mentioned perfectly okay. I just want to take a minute to dissect the phrase because I want to just take time out of talking about this movie in general. Just, just take a pause on discussing this film and discuss the term perfectly okay. It seems like a George Carlin is where it's like fine and dandy. You know, I, I can't imagine somebody being both fine and dandy, right? I've been fine, but not yep. dandy. Dandy, but not fine. Perfectly okay. Perfect describes a situation. It's perfect. It's great. It's good. Right. But right. okay is like, eh, okay. No, in, in, in the world of okay films, it was, it was perfect uh, in the sense of, uh, there were definitely things that caught my attention. Um, it was perfectly it, mediocre. Movie. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be perfectly okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, Todd. Well, I own this film on Laserdisc, and I'm I annoyed I didn't do. bring it bring it out. I bet because you I was do. Because, that right now. I was like, I should have the Laserdisc to show. Is that because not... you can select the exact frame, Todd? <laughs> Set why? No, you honestly, could zoom in. It's because it, it was one of those lost classics for quite a while, gotcha. and the only way to get it was is laser classic disc. a term that applies here? It has a very large cult following. Large, um, yes, cult, really? Yeah, it, it does. Mm, sex, okay. there's a, the sex comedy films have have a solid following. Oh, it's okay. no Fast Times. I'm saying right. that right now. Sure. But, um, there is funny bits, and right now they're so incorrect, it's kind of hard. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really you know is. If you watch, I felt Revenge awkward the watching this movie <laughs> by myself in my room. I felt awkward watching this movie. Like, and I thought to my, okay, can uh, let me? I apologize to jump in, but I was just oh, no. ready to just go right into it. But I want you to finish your initial thoughts before I I move forward. I, and you know what? It, it's funny because you can a lot of the '80s sex comedies and the '80s comedies in general. You'll go back and watch, and have the same issue. Revenge of the Nerds, Porky's are both very problematic now. Oh well, that's that's fair. I think Ozzy's gonna blow it comparing those movies to. This. I'm not even comparing. <laughs> those are both better movies, but I'm saying yeah. going back and watching them now, they both have problematic problematic elements, like this one do, also does. Um, that being said, like I said, I grew up on it. It's I I always I know we're not gonna go favorite bits part yet, so I do have those. So. Why not? Let's just let's get that out of the way <laughs> because honestly, it's like you know, but, like I I've been told in a for a leadership role, you know, if you want to give criticism on somebody, you give uh, what is it, uh, two compliments but a, one criticism. Right. On, but Ozzy, right? what's your what's your favorite bit? <laughs> I was going to let you go first, but I can say clearly it's the scene where she tries to buy the condoms in the pharmacy and runs into the boarding, the the boarding school lady of the girls boarding school. And the boarding school lady has this mask on and doesn't want her to see that was my, that's where my interest peaked in this film. And that happened within the first Half hour. 25 minutes. Uh, you know, it's funny. And that's why I wanted you to go to first. Not this first. film. Because I knew that was going to be the one. You know what's funny? I I understand. Not this. Uh, Greg? Okay. So first off, I I just want to clarify because this movie's it's different. Um, Todd Todd picked this one. Well, no, to be fair, our listeners ask us to do private lessons. This was kind of like a lesser one. So it's because private lessons had been done on a previous episode on another show. Yeah, so I said, well, why don't we do private school? It's also got Sylvia Crystal very close to the request. So I just got a question on this. This private school, is it a high school? <laughs> you can tell by the laughter by of I never, that the answer is I, yes. No, here's my thing. I never thought about that because when I was a kid, I always just assumed it was college. But now that you say it, I don't I don't know. Yep. Yeah. So that's what makes yep. it a little awkward. Um, <laughs> yep. That being said, speaking of awkward, I'm going to say the most awkward line 
uh, before the favorite uh, part <laughs> of the movie. Most awkward was when uh, one of the characters was um, talking about if her boyfriend was uh, was great um, the first time they they were together. Yes. And she said, yes. I, I don't know. I was <laughs> passed out. Um, I believe they call that rape these days. Yep, um, they sure do. So <laughs> they sure do. And if it's in high school, rape of a minor. Cool. Yeah. Right? We're really knocking it out of the park. On well, this. but he's a but... minor too. They're both in oh, high yeah, school. Yeah. So it's, it's fine. That's true. It's true. But it's on film. It's on film. <laughs> so anyway. It's uh, from its era. It's not it the is, only it one. Is. This is early well, 80s. So it's right after the 70s. You know, free love, it, all this okay, stuff. Right, so, no, sure. you know, I, there was I, a transition. I get all that. But Todd, can you go through your... Favorite part, so I can just eviscerate the whole comparison to everything else. Um, okay, well, I, I have I have stuff to back up on my. On oh, my, okay, back up. Okay. Well, I still have my favorite. This. Hold on, I just yeah, want to say my favorite go. joke oh, first. Oh, that I was, thought that was. Just, I apologize. No, my son was sorry. not favorite. So my favorite part, though, uh, sadly, was the uh, intro song um, because <laughs> it just threw me with the tonality of it it was very upbeat very poppy but uh the lyrics were definitely not that and i really think uh that was probably the funniest part of this movie uh, doesn't get much better i'll tell you that much <laughs> from the beginning uh well usually the beginning like hypes you up like this is gonna be good like oh that was the best that was the best we could see Todd, uh, uh, come on uh, you already mentioned the condom scene that's one of my favorite bits one of the bits I don't know if I'll mention. The last one though is the the it's still a little rapey, but is oh the my God, I apologize. I don't the movie as has long as it's too. only a little rapey. <laughs> the Ray just... Walston sex scene in the car at the end, it's just so over the top and the car coming down. That whole bit, I was dying when I was watching it. Yeah. Uh okay. So I'm gonna jump in here so the film started quite quickly with establishing what you know it's going to be about and i'm thinking like oh so this is like going to be an early 80s sex comedy sure but like, like you said porkies or we have animal house but here's the, here's the thing that made this different is those films had characters that you cared about uh this didn't have that in fact they took the people that were cut from the auditions of Animal House and Porky's and, and Revenge of the Nerds and said, hey, can't you want to you roll? Fast times. <laughs> Phoebe Cates is the only exception, I'll say. But after the first, like, 30 minutes, it just, I mean, I just feel more and more awkward as I watch this film. And I definitely think that some uh, senior citizen male, impotent male, had something to do in the writing of this because <laughs> where... An old man gives a lady CPR and she's just all of a sudden okay with him being, you know, and everything happening and being totally cool. Yeah, that that's bullshit. And it just was gross, especially seeing an entire high school cheerleading squad working out um, for no reason for a good five minutes. That was really awkward to watch. Um, I, I, I'm Greg, I'm sure that you had some awkward mo You think, well, you mentioned one of them also when they're at the video arcade and you also hear from the video machine. Oh, please don't. And he keeps thrust <laughs> like, that's just like, wh who thought of, a this doesn't even exist in the real world. The, uh, Nothing oh, says family entertainment. <laughs> the eighties got to love cocaine. <laughs> It's it's how this movie was made in terms of the decision making to have a green lit to be made. Uh, cocaine had a, I said, <laughs> like, a, it doesn't matter. It, it was still a piece of shit. I, I, I think this is the least. I, or I should say the most hated film I've ever watched because of this show. This one, but not because of this whole, not because of the whole Fletcher network. Oh, no, no, the move. It's a terrible movie. Like, I would want to give it one point <laughs> five. It is bad. That's like, and, than I and like I said at the beginning, you know, not all our favorite comedies we end up reviewing, and 
at least I can say that I went through and walked this journey. So whoever's listening to this or watching this doesn't have to, because I swear to God, I would do anything else with 90 minutes than watch that movie again. <laughs> <laughs> this is payback for mystery, man. We'll just go with that. Hey, at least that was an attempt to be themed with the release Justice League or whatever. I there know. was a there was a reason there, for that. There was what was the reason for that? It's I just wanted to see some tits. No, That's the well, only reason you should watch one, this movie. Like one, I said, well, Cinemax Betsy at Russell, 2 a.m. Betsy Russell is amazing. Did the Saw films later. Um, now you maybe forget what I was going to say. <laughs> I, I oh, didn't say this is one of my favorites. I do like this movie, and it is like, look, I will tell you this watching it this time at, in 2021, so I haven't watched it in a while. I was like, okay, a lot of this stuff is problematic now, but yet I still laugh at it because I laughed at it then. Mm, okay. Watch the I old man, to... what, what he liked, your ghost. Yeah. The one behind you. Shut up. I'm, I'm not even in the mood. I can like, see him. This movie gave me a headache. Because of its lack it. of logic. It, no, seriously. Like the, the like I mentioned in the synopsis where it said they dress up as women or whatever to go sneak into the dorm. Like, why? Like, why? Like, and then when they're there, like, what what was the plan? What what is happening? I don't care about anything. These people are morons. <laughs> and then at the end, when uh Phoebe Cates plays Christine, when she apologizes and says, I've been a jerk lately, like how have you been a jerk? You booked the room. You bought the condoms. He was in a room with, with to her topless, and you the one that's been the jerk. What the fuck is... I apologize. What age was going on here? Oh, my... No. And this is where I said this was written by an old, white, impotent man to have the main star, you know, and of, of her, you know, the main protagonist say, yeah, I was a jerk because I got mad that I saw you cheating on me, essentially. And then the whole time, it's not even and then, like, he gets angry that she's nauseous when they're nope, going to have nope. this first time moment. And it's just Honestly, like, God, what? why do I care about anyone? And then they spend an extra 15 minutes at the end trying to, uh, to, to do the sex on the beach scene. What the hell? Like, this is supposed to be a comedy and you just give me 10 minutes of a Fucking romance! This is the worst film I've ever had to see because of the show. Ozzy does not Ozzy, have, I, have fun with I, a bad film. No, no, and I think you're forgetting it's the wonderful part. It's a waste part. of time. It and is a also, major waste of time. <laughs> Wasted you're, breath. You're forgetting a very major moral part of the film. No, the moral which, part. Uh, What's the yeah, moral yeah. part? So when when uh, Christine uh, finds out about her her boyfriend cheating supposedly or what she thinks is that her friend says you should forgive him because he's not as bad as my boyfriend <laughs> and i forgive him <laughs> oh my god yes this he, is I like from a parallel universe <laughs> and, but to think of this though ozzy once upon a time this was 100 percent acceptable every aspect of this movie yeah yeah that's why I was born much later, or rather, I was born one year after the fact, because if I was this old and that movie had come out, I'd be yelling at somebody about this piece of shit. <sighs> I'm not even kidding. I, I swear to God, I feel that in my bones. In a parallel universe, I am 37 years old in 1983 and saw this out of the theater, and I'm yelling at somebody the same things I'm yelling at you guys right now on some fucking street corner. Usually I don't was... curse as much, but I really don't care because this movie pissed me off that much. But if you were 13, it'd be a different story. <laughs> uh, that's very true. And you got to watch your arms, Ozzy. You're hitting your old ghost man. Yeah. So shut up. Ask him what he it's not about. even like I don't even care. I, I it just right. put me in a mood that I don't like. Not like you could say that there's thirteen he, ghosts behind right me, there. and I would not it's care. Whatever, done. let everybody else see him. He's, what up, dude? What up? Where? I don't care. <laughs> in a blue shirt. Listen, I've given this movie a one point five. Greg, what say you? Well, I got to give it a perky too. <laughs> These are Todd, all yell at me. I'm a three and a half. I bet you are. <laughs> well, that was the review of the 1983 film Private School. 
Are you going to ask him what he th- what what number he's giving it? He gave it a perky two. No, I meant the your your old man. Shut up! There's nobody behind me. Right, look at your screen. I see him. God, look at your screen, Ozzy. Uh, uh, Todd, I know you're doing <laughs> stupid camera tricks. You think I'm going to fall for that? You're a prick because it even, like this guy doesn't even look like he would be following me around. This is the kind of guy that complains about you parking for like five seconds in a loading zone or whatever. <laughs> That's the kind of guy that watches this movie. <laughs> That's the kind of guy that watches this movie. That's why That's... Todd has a still image. They're That's all the... friends. That's and I just want to the... say, I, I, I want to say the director. That's the ghost of the director. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. That's even better. I, I'm glad he's here. I'm glad you're witnessing all of this. Whatever his name is, I don't even care. I really don't even want to put in the effort of clicking the window to find out what his name is because I really don't care that much. But I swear to God, if this this guy haunts me, I'm blaming you. Well, stop touching his crotch first off. He'd probably like that. He probably <laughs> you tell me this guy was the director and all the stuff that happened in the movie with the old guys like dude, everybody was perfectly fine with the drunk old guy groping all the women. That's and who was it that got the revenge on him? Who was it that that sucked him in the face? Was it one of these women that got groped? No, it was the man that sucked him in the face. <laughs> like not even the women can get revenge in this movie. <laughs> God, <laughs> so stupid. <sighs> Well, that was that. Like I said, screw the ghost. It's not real. But next week, we'll be back with a better episode of a better film where we'll be reviewing that film being Rat Race, which I can tell you, based on just memory alone, is already going to be a much better time than this horrible piece of garbage. (laughs) Three and a half. On the Todd scale. And actually, if you want to hear our review, you can go check out. There's a review of this one, I'm pretty sure, too, on uh, the old program. Probably a different tone on that review. I'm Probably a different tone. <laughs> Probably a different tone. Should have invited Dan to come on this one. No, that would have been a terrible. I would have made him cry. Uh, I don't yeah. No, I'm mad. I am angry. I'm going to be in a much better mood next week when we watch Rat Race. Because it was this movie that put me in a bad mood. I know for a fact Rat Race will put me in a good mood. Once I start it and finish it, I'll be in a great mood. I was going to say, shouldn't you be in half a good mood? (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. We have a week to watch that film, and I'm going to watch it as soon as possible so I can get this bad taste out of my mouth. I apologize for my anger. We just needed a Wang Wang cameo in this film. <laughs> For those on the audio version, Todd just flashed the picture of me eating ribs that I thought would be a good idea because we're recording Anchorman and I wanted to say I had ribs for lunch. And Todd just thought, I'm going to keep this photo and just show it to piss off Ozzy. And so far, it's happened every week since Anchorman. Wait, wait. There it is again. Wait, wait, no. Hold on. Let no, me, hold, oh, yeah, hold on. Why are we holding I on? I was trying to add the ghost to the other picture. But oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's real cool. I was going to say he's been Ozzy, you. Yes. You can't be upset if Todd decides to rib you on that picture. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that, there we go. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> on on that. Can we just take it off? Can that's I, what they said a lot in this movie. Yeah, no, that for real, true. honestly. Now, uh, anything else you'd like to say before we head out for the evening? No. I'm looking forward to some Rowan Atkinson. That's yes, that's all I gotta say. Absolutely, Todd. Anything you want to add? Um, go listen to our other review. <laughs> if if you thought this was a great movie, go listen to the other review. You'll probably feel at home. And if you loved this movie, I apologize that I probably didn't make you feel at home here, but I don't care. Uh, And if you haven't seen this movie, keep it that way. Before the better. You notice we're not even telling you where you can find it right now. So it's available on Blu-ray. Stop it. It's not on streaming. It's on digital. It's not on streaming. That should tell you something. There's a lot of stuff not on streaming. It's on digital. There's also a lot of stuff on streaming. All right, now moving on. He's got nothing else. Greg Larson, producer Todd. 
I'm Ozzy V, and we'll see you next week right here on Flesh Wound Farce.